if something's not fitting or something's torn or something's ripped or something's fading out, don't do it. I recently saw a pair of my favorite White House Black Market jeggings in my exact size and they were this the exact tone of jean that I was looking for and I noticed there was some pulling and some stretching of the material and it looked like it was getting really thin and the material had been compromised by being overstretched. If you've ever seen that like kind of overstretched um, stretchy jean kind of effect if you've ever seen that and not cute. And, and there was a part of me that went, you know what, I think if I wore a longer top over it, you wouldn't be able to see it. But for me, I don't know, I just, it was a pass. The material was already compromised, it was in the crotch area, so not really an easy fix and kind of an obvious um, whoopsies. The first time I tried it on, you didn't notice, I didn't see it, but then I took it off and as I was going up to the counter, I saw it. And anyways, for me, it was a pass. There's just so many other things that work. It, obviously, if, if you find a garment that you're really needing, it's a hole in your closet, it checks off all the boxes for you of what you love and what you need, and you're in a spot where that's the budget that you have, then, you know, make it work. But for me, I just hard pass on those. Okay, number three, it has to fit now. Not needing tailoring, not needing, well, if I do this, well, if I take it in here, well, if I let it out there, it might fit, no. Okay, number four, I ask myself this when I'm looking at different items and my shopping cart is, my shopping cart is full of all my beautiful treasures I found. I ask myself, would I pay full price for this if I saw it in a boutique somewhere or if I saw it in a department store? Is it that good? Does it fit me that well? Is it in that good of quality? Is it filling a hole that I have in my closet? Or it's just that fantastic of a piece that I've been searching for, been wanting. It's so my style. It's going to be my style for the next X amount of years. And it's so high quality that I would pay full price for it. And if really, if it's not checking off a lot of those things, then I say no. Because it's so easy to get sucked into the whole mindset of, well, I'm saving money by spending money because I'm getting such a good deal and that's not true. No, you're just spending money and filling your closet full of things that maybe you don't actually love. And I've been so guilty of that a couple of times, you know, I've found things that maybe just aren't really my style. Like a couple of years ago, I went through this, this season where I was just loving very East Coast preppy um, kind of Lily Pulitzer kind of colors and looks and patterns and textures very very preppy and I thought that was my style and you know I just had a, my first baby I was kind of going through a body image transition I was not the same size or shape as I always had been and I was learning how to be a mother and I was just trying to find what my new style was and I think it's normal for style to kind of ebb and flow so I found myself being really gravitating really gravitating towards this preppy style and so I started purchasing a bunch and before I went to department stores and spent a lot of money I decided to go to a thrift store and find a bunch of different classic pieces that I felt like would fit into the preppy aesthetic you know what that's not my style and that's okay I tried it out I spent a little bit of money very minimal I had very high quality pieces that fit me really well but I just felt after about one year I didn't really wear those pieces. I didn't get pulled towards that when I was getting dressed in the morning. I wasn't feeling like me in some of those styles. Now this is not a nix on preppy style at all. I'm just giving you my personal example. That just didn't fit how I was feeling and even though I was really attracted to that style initially and I really wanted to try it out, I just realized my style is just a little bit more classical. I like a little bit more of like a polished, kind of a little bit of glam, casual glam kind of style. So it just wasn't me and that's okay. And I feel like I had the freedom to be able to try that because I was not investing in really expensive pieces yet. I was just trying it out. And so I've gone through my wardrobe and those pieces that after a year and a half, I really hardly touched or maybe wore once, I've set them to the side and I've resold a lot of them because they were high quality pieces, even though I purchased them at a thrift store. And that's kind of helped me find more of the pieces that I am gravitating towards. And I do go back to time and time again. So 
you know, if you wouldn't pay full price for it, then maybe don't buy it. Unless you're trying something new and it's a great price point to try, then give it a shot. Okay, tip number five, my last tip is be flexible with sizing. Shoes, not so much. I think most shoes are pretty consistent. But I'm talking about sizing of pants, jeans, tops, sweaters, dresses, you name it. Every brand is so different in sizing. So I am a six to an eight right now. It's like I consider myself just a medium. I can go down to a six, but sometimes in like juniors or young adult sizes, I'm up at like an eight to a 10. And, and I'm just all over the place. Sometimes in a top, I'm a four or a small. Sometimes I've worn large and it just depends on the fit, the style, the material, how's it shrunk. So that large is really measuring more like a medium or a small. So it just, sizing is across the board. So hard to know anyways let alone when you're looking at dozens of different brands right next to each other. So what I like to do is I I like to be comfortable, so I'd, I never want to find anything that's restricting or too small. So I'll just go to the mediums, which is what I would normally choose for myself in a department store, and I start looking there. And then I'll go and I'll check out some of the larges, just casually. I might check out some of the smalls if it's a very generous small. Vanity sizing is a real thing, and it does seem like the higher the price point initially, like in a boutique or a department store, the smaller the size. And that's a whole nother topic for a whole nother day, but sizing can just be all over the place. So I would say don't limit yourself to just one section of tops or blouses or jackets or jeans or whatever have you. Like with pants and with jeans, yeah, it just, vanity sizing is real. And then when you're looking at teen versus women's or misses sizes, that's all different as well. So just be flexible. And like I said earlier, you never know how a garment has been cared for, if it's shrunk, if it's held its size, it's, a, it's original size, you just don't know. So I say, like, don't torture yourself. If you know it's not gonna fit, don't put it on. But just take them all into the dressing room and try. You just never know how something's gonna fit until you get it on. So I'll leave you guys with this, have fun. I think that it's really fun and exciting, especially if you're on a budget like I was in high school and college, especially when I was in college. I found my entire wardrobe for student teaching and if I may say so myself, I just felt like I dressed top notch for my student teaching. You know, I pulled in some new pieces here and there and in high school I had a lot of new pieces, a lot of, you know, consignment store, thrift store pieces as well and just mix them all interchangeably. I feel like if you have a good quality leather handbag, doesn't need to be designer, doesn't need to cost a lot of money. I've been there, I've done that, I've bought them, I've had them and I keep coming back to just a high quality leather handbag is all you need some really nice high quality leather nice cared for nicely cared for shoes jeans that fit you well professional pants that fit you well some tops and blouses that are in classic styles that's your color that fit you well that's tailored that fits your aesthetic and your style some nice jackets and toppers or blazers or cardigans that can add that piece in some really nice classic styled dressers, add in a couple skirts, and really focus on those high quality topper pieces, like a trench coat, like a blazer, like a wool jacket. So, so with those, I typically do buy those new. Anyways, if you stick with those, those kind of pieces and you have high quality, whether you bought them brand new and you spent $200 on your jeans or you spent $12 on your jeans, I wear both and no one would probably know the difference. Same with shoes, high quality leather shoes. I'll tell you guys, my dad is such a shoe snob. He really is. He loves a high quality pair of shoes. And he goes to the department stores and he tries all the shoes on and he buys them and he loves nice leather, really well made, really high quality shoes for men. And he likes it on us girls too as well. But for him, he will spend so much money on a nice pair of shoes. Then he started getting into, you know, some of this like thrift storing like, you know, I have done through the years as well. And he has just found some of the most like ridiculously expensive, crazy, insane, high quality men's pair of leather shoes that have never been worn or touched, look like they're brand new from the store. And he has a closet full of shoes. And you know what? Half of them are thrift store and you would never know. And half of them are really high end department store. And he takes care of them all just like I do. I guess we're both kind of shoe people. 
Maybe that's where I get it from. But you would never know. You can find so many high quality things at the thrift store. It's unbelievable. But I like to mix and match. I do a little bit of both. And I, since I know my style, I know my colors, I know what's gonna fit and suit my aesthetic, my personality, my lifestyle. I can mix and match with brand new, high quality consignment, thrift store, put it all together and it saves me a ton of money so that when I see that incredible leather purse that I wanna save for, that I have the budget to do that. Or if I need a really specific pair of shoe that I can't find pre-loved, then I can buy it. Or if I find that jacket, that really high quality wool, wool blend, winter jacket or fall jacket, I can buy that brand new because I've saved for it. And because my, my budget isn't getting sucked up on having to have everything brand new. And there's so many other ethical, and environmental reasons as well but um, but for me it's just more so a fun game and I love fashion and I love finding those little treasures so good luck to you finding those little treasures um, let me know down below if you have any uh, tried and true tips for shopping in the thrift store secondhand or anything like that um, if there's anything that you feel like I left out that would be beneficial to others just leave it down below if you have any thrift store horror stories I'd love to hear some of those as well I think if if you've been into a thrift store you've probably had a couple thrift store horror stories of things that you've found or maybe things that you've purchased that you shouldn't have or what have you so um, share down below and we can uh, enjoy each other's stories all right, happy thrift store hunting.